Very good. Okay, so breaking news: the government has announced a new tax, uh, a new tax on sugar drinks. You know why? Because drinking soda doesn't affect your health; it also affects all the society. And these are real examples of what economists call a negative consumption externality. So as you can see, when people drink a lot of soda, it's actually the amount of sugar inside this amount of glass. So as you can see, the soda is actually full of sugar. And you know, when people drink a lot of soda, they increase the risk of obesity, of diabetes, and also heart disease. And that's always their personal choice. You can choose to drink it or you choose not to drink it. But the problem is the healthcare system has to treat those illnesses. But the healthcare system won't pay for your illnesses. The society will pay the bills. So the true cost of soda is fully paid by the government. It will be fully paid by the country. Yesterday, a girl called Charlize was found having a heart attack while playing the piano. Doctors have found the cause. It was turns out she was having a heart attack because she was because she was drinking soda drinks and sugar drinks while playing the piano. So doctor just came right in time to her house and turned several times of CPR until she finally woke up and was brought up by an ambulance. Doctors have also do some tests and turns out she now officially have heart disease and diabetes. So now let's look at the video. that you are a public health advocate and would like to see a tax on a sugary sweetened sugar sweetened beverage established in your community uh, so what steps would you take doctor so few people in a position to tell the story in such a complaining way as dr donati day will join us don't worry guys dr donati is playing as dr james craig okay thank you kinara so sugar sweetened drinks can be disastrous for health particularly in children. Our bodies can cope with sugar in small amounts, but in excess, it ends up in the liver and ultimately triggers us to get sick. Sugar-sweetened beverages are the new tobacco. Taxes work well to reduce tobacco purchases, and they've been applied and appear to work equally well in sugary drinks. So what you have just watched is an example of negative consumption. Now we will explain it more specifically. So basically, a negative consumption externality happens when the consumption of a good or service imposed on a cost of third parties who are not actually directly involved in the transaction. Basically, when consumer pays for these goods, the private benefit they receive is higher than the true benefit to society. So it basically reduces the welfare of others. This happens because prices do not reflect the full social cost of consumption. Consumers act in their own self-interest and ignore the spillover effects. Some common examples include smoking. Secondhand smoke harms non-smokers. Alcohol abuse leads to accidents, violence, and higher healthcare costs. Sugary drinks contribute to obesity, diabetes, and increased public health spending. The result is market failure. Resources are over-allocated to goods that create external costs leading to inefficiency, environmental damage, and reduced quality of life. So, let's take a look at the graph. There are two demand curves, MPB and MSB. MPB is the marginal private benefit, which means which shows what the consumer thinks they benefit from uh, consuming the product. Meanwhile, MSB is the marginal social benefit. It is the actual benefit it has on society which if you notice is actually lower than the marginal private benefit because they are consuming a harmful product uh, there is only one supply curve which is msc equals to mpc because this is only one because th they don't produce any extra external cost here now 
The free market equilibrium is on point QM where MPP equals to MSB. Sorry, MPP equals to MPC. Meanwhile, the socially optimal equilibrium is on the point where MSC equals to MSB, which is on point QOPD. On the graph, there is a shaded triangle. This is the dead weight welfare loss. It is the welfare loss that happens due to overconsumption. This graph shows that there is an allocative inefficiency because too many people are consuming too, sorry, too many resources are used to produce a harmful good. So how can the government respond? Policies include indirect taxes, increase the price of harmful goods like cigarettes or soda, shifting consumption closer to Q-opt, regulations and bans. For example, banning smoking in public and restricting alcohol sales. Education and information campaigns raise awareness about the dangers of unhealthy consumption, shifting demand downwards. And lastly, subsidies for substitutes. For example, subsidizing healthier drinks or public transport, making them more attractive alternatives. But also, we need to evaluate policies. Each has always pros and also cons. First of all, taxes. The taxes reduce consumption and raise government revenue, but may be regressive and encourage black market. While regulation effective but costly to monitor and enforce. And lastly, subsidies. Subsidies encourage alternatives but create opportunity costs for government spending. And lastly, let's look at the effect it has on the stakeholders. So, starting off with our consumers, uh, they are kind of mixed but also kind of worse off because uh, they are going to face higher prices but they may benefit because they now um, consume less of these harmful goods and now they might have better health and stuff. Then for the producers, they are kind of worse off because they lose revenue and they may resist from these new regulations but they might benefit because they could now uh, innovate by producing healthier, cleaner and better goods. The government, obviously, they gain from this because they gain from the tax revenue and they reduce healthcare loss, healthcare costs, but they may pre face pressure from the industries. And lastly, society as a whole mostly benefits from this because they are no longer consuming the harmful goods and they reduce negative externalities, improved health, and greater e efficiency. So, Overall, government intervention can help reduce and correct these market failures, but they may come into conflicts of interest between the stakeholders. So as you can see from what we discussed before of, of me, Charlie, and also Dr. Dona, as a result, we can see there's an overconsumption of sodas. Too many sodas are sold at a low price compared to what's the best for society. And this is why government stepped in. By taxing soda, implementing hot health warnings, or running educational campaigns, they are aimed to reduce consumption. The goal is to make the consumer pay the true cost of the choice, so the market moves closer to the socially optimal level.